on the road again leaving home it is about 7 p.m this is monday january the 4th and i'm headed back to arizona on a little solo mission got some unfinished business down there i'm gonna go buy uh, the over-the-counter archery tag for 2021 and get after the deer so my commitment is to hunt hard this month i would love to get it done on one of these desert bucks a lot of years I'm hesitant to kill something in January and I've passed deer in the past because of that. Just so that I have an opportunity to hunt coos deer or do something else later on. But this year, um, I really want to get it done with my bow. So I won't be passing many opportunities. Any mature buck that I can get in range on may just be biting the dust. So. Anyway, I'm about to pull on the road, the main road here, so I'm gonna catch up with you guys in a minute. That's better, I finally pulled over somewhere where I could talk. Anyway, so I'm headed down there. If I get a chance at a mature buck, I'm gonna do my best to make it happen. I'm gonna drive for a few hours. Uh, I gotta find somewhere, probably a Walmart or something to buy a tag at late. And then tomorrow, first light, we're gonna be on the bucks. rolled in a lot of late night driving man it's like through two or three in the morning and I made it down here to where I'm gonna camp I threw everything out of the back of the truck cooler full of food got the bed set up even got the heater going Crawling collar night. Glassing points up there. In the morning I'm gonna hike up to it. See if I can't get eyes on a big buck. Found him, found the deer. Um, they're clear across from me out on the flats, which is good. That's kind of where I hope they would be because they're pretty huntable, but they're running all over the place. I don't know if somebody bumped them or if they're rutting. Uh, it looks like they're rutting because there's some feeding too. So a uh, pretty good sized herd and they're like maybe a mile away in a very huntable spot. I like that. I'll throw on, see if I can get some footage for you. spotter and see um, if I can get an eye on the buck and see what he is well um, I kind of got over to where these deer were this morning everything's bedded up for the evening for the afternoon it's like 2 a.m. 2 <laughs> God, I cannot talk it's like 2 p.m. Um, I'm gonna go post up above the water and see what comes in throughout the day and see if it's worth possibly sitting it tomorrow I did bring my ground blind down and um, if I do get eyes on something then maybe I will do that Maybe I'll be able to put a move on it, so.
they saw me before I saw them, but I had them at about 70 yards. No buck. Just those. So I sat and looked over that water for a couple hours. Didn't see anything but a couple wild horses, but decided to make a little loop and uh, got a deer shed right here. First shed of 2021, January 6th. Monkey's already off my back for the year. Yeah. Nice little deer antler tucked in here. Even chalky. Cool. Little bull point. Nice little buck. Kind of a baby. Cool. Take that with me. It's a win for the day. I can't remember when the last update was. Um, I hunted till dark. Didn't end up getting onto them. I saw some deer. Uh, those ones that I filmed, but I did not see any bucks. So I decided to my do my favorite thing apparently, which is drive in the dark for several hours. It's uh, 2 a.m. I just rolled into another unit a long, long way south of where I was. This one has a lot of coos deer and a lot of mule deer, hopefully. I'm like tired. My speech is not making a ton of sense right now. Uh, so I'm gonna go to bed. Wind's blowing I'm up around this big flat. The road getting in here was two hours of terrible, anyway. Hopefully it's all worth it. We can get on a big buck in the morning, but for now, it's time to call her a night, roll out of the bedroom, and go to sleep. So, good night. Well, it's about 11, 10.30 a.m. Um, I got up. I woke up pretty early, actually, but I had some stuff to get adjusted around. Got my pack loaded up a while ago and hiked clear across here to uh, the little glassing point that I like to glass from. Uh and the first hillside I looked at has a good sized group of deer on it. So right from the get go, we in business, they're in a spot where um, I've hunted these deer before, put stocks on them on that very ridge. So uh, I do know the terrain and uh, they're not in a bad spot right now. I haven't seen the buck yet together oh down below there there's more there's the buck there's the buck anyway I was looking on scout to hunt and there's a little drainage that runs in between me and them and uh, I never noticed before but I think I can cut around the one end of it and it would give me a big loop around those deer so I'm gonna get on the map and put together a little bit of a game plan but it's always good when they're right where you think they're gonna be drove a long way to be here I've seriously just been sitting here for like an hour and a half watching deer pour out of these canyons and go hit these water troughs. There's two right across the canyon from each other, two different troughs, and it seems like the deer like to hit them instead of going down in the canyon to drink because there's a creek in the canyon. This way they can stay up on the flats and kind of have like, I think, better visibility, I think is why they do it. But um, right now the biggest buck is at 750 yards. Um, just feeding around, checking his does. He's uh, real calm. He's a really nice deer. So, actually, I don't know if that. No, oh, that's the smaller buck. So they <laughs> they must not be too concerned because they switched groups of does. First, the little three point was with the does on the right, and the bigger buck was with the does on the left, and they just switched places, switched herds. Weird. So I'm gonna see if I can find that bigger buck because he's the one I want to make a move on. That three points in a pretty decent spot to kill actually. Um, I have a straight little loop over to him and I could stay in the cover and get up to where he's at. So I don't know. I'm gonna brainstorm a little bit more and then make a play. My favorite thing to do in these scenarios is wait for something to be blaring off, blaringly obvious. Like they get to a spot where I'm like, oh man, I could do this, and then I'll make a move. And um, as my friends can attest, sometimes I just sit here the whole day <laughs> and watch them 
and never make a move because I don't ever feel like it's the right zone. Which frustrates some people, understandably. Both probably shooter bucks to me at this phase in the game. So it took me two hours to belly crawl within 80 yards of these deer and then I sat there for another hour while they ran around me. Right here I'm 55 yards from a doe that keeps stomping her foot at me. The buck's about 10 yards behind her and I'm just waiting for him to clear so I can shoot. Unfortunately, when I shot, my 360 camera was buried in the bush, so you couldn't see the deer on the other angle. Let's go see what it did. Oh, I just took a shot. Kind of a long one, 65 yards. I'm trying to figure out exactly where the buck was standing. I walked to the top of the hill right away because I wanted to be able to see where he went. It's just yellow grass forever, but I don't see him. He probably went up and over that hill. I heard it boom. Oh, there's my arrow. <laughs> Sounded like I hit it. <laughs> Clean miss. Clean missed him. Whiffed him. That's okay. That's better than hitting one bad, I thought. I might have dropped under him as soon as I shot, but oh well, now tomorrow we can try him again. Dang, I felt pretty good, I felt pretty good. Who knows what happened. So this is where the deer were drinking. I don't know with me clean missing that buck if he's gonna come back or what, but um, if not, there's another trough right across the way the deer were hitting yesterday. There's one over here to the south of me as well. So the plan for tomorrow, ground blind right here somewhere. Looking at this and check this out. Antelope shed. The most common place I find them is floating in troughs from the ground around a water trough. They just shed the sheath like that. That's just a little one, but anyway. I think this is the play for tomorrow.
so far. Be two point. And I would shoot him row ashore. So we get a little closer. Yeah, that deer's sweet. Old. See how its back is swayed and his chest is barreled and his neck's all full. That's that's a mature older buck. That's what I'm talking about right there. <laughs> oh, that deer is cool. He's fired up too. Oh, is he a two by three? Nope. Straight two, baby. That's. Oh, I would be stoked to shoot that deer. I think that deer's cool. So I got out of the blind. I couldn't sit in there anymore. And I made a move on the big two point. And I made, uh, I don't know what the deal was. Like every single way I tried to approach him, the wind was blowing right to him. I don't know, like, I'm sure that's part of the reason they stay in that canyon right there. Cause the wind, it's just like, I tried to loop and come down on him. When I got too closer, the wind was blowing down on him. Like ridiculous, but. That's beside the point. I just glassed up. I think it's the buck I missed yesterday. It's hard to tell. It's just a big tall buck, whatever it is. It's got a good herd of does with it. And I did see another guy out here, which is kind of rare. I don't usually run into people out here. If you do, they're just riding for us through or something. But um, he cut under me and up the canyon almost looked like his track was going towards those deer. That's gotta be the same buck I missed yesterday. But he's clear over to the east. I mean, a couple, a mile, and a mile and a half to the east of where he was yesterday. That was the buck that I was hoping would hit the blind I sat today, but he didn't show up. bit of a struggle finding deer today um, so I think it's time to give the spot a little break and head out of here and uh, head for home my boys have basketball games tomorrow it'd be cool if I could make it it's a lot of driving to do if I drove right now I would get home if I could leave in an hour that's maybe pushing it 
but then I could be home at midnight at 1 a.m. So I guess it just depends if I want to do it tonight or I could also just drive part way, grab a room, and then drive the rest of the way in the morning, get up early. That's probably what I'll do. Then I'll make it home right in time for the game. Anyway, that's not that exciting. I'm going to show you guys the hill on the way out of here that I got to climb. And then, uh, yeah. So the deer won again, as they usually do on these over the counter archery hunts. Tough hunts, long odds, low success rates, but a lot of fun. All right, so we're almost to the first bad park. <laughs> Drop down in this canyon. And then it's going up uh, that other side over there. And it is just like, oh, I just have a pit in my stomach. It makes me nervous. I don't know why. It's not particularly dangerous. It's just sketchy. All right, so that's the sketchy part. It looks so not steep in the camera. It's steep and it's super loose rocks and it's ledgy. So anyway, I'll try to document it the best I can as I go up. Like nothing. We're not past the ugly part yet, but I wanted to show you guys this. The tundra just walked up this. Look at these. That This is like a four foot drop off. Tundy. Now they're a big set of rocks right there. Man, listen to the quail. Anyway, a little bit of ways to go up. It mellows out right here for a little bit and then up by that tree is just like But I'll try to film it. Oh, we made it. Got one more big rock. I got a miss right here. Oh, and then about a thousand more. There's one more set of ledges that has me a little worried, but I think coming down it was the sketchy part. I think going up will be fine. Oh, I hate doing that. Meeting up there to where it gets real ugly. Real ugly. Oh, oh, oh. Where you just pucker. This is the one. <laughs> this ledge right here is my not favorite one. But from the bottom, I think I can pull this trick. We'll see. We'll see. Oh, yep, it's gonna work. Oh, I thought I was gonna scrape my front bumper. A few more. And we up it, baby. Go. We got it in focus. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Um, I do need to thank some people who bought apparel this week. There's just a few, um, but I want to tell you um, to be excited because I talked to um, the people that make my apparel today and we have some big things in the works for this coming year. I'm super excited for it and I hope you guys are too. So keep an eye out in the near future. So here's the people that I need to thank. First one is Cody Anderson. Thank you, Cody. Brendan Davis. Thank you, Brendan. Austin Hyatt. Thank you, uh, Jordan Webster, Robert Jackman, Candy Armstrong, Kayla Yara, Tyler Langworthy, uh, Trevor Barfus, uh, Zach Davis, and Misty Judd. So thank you guys very much for supporting what I'm doing through buying my apparel. Hope you enjoyed this video. It is about um, 9 p.m. and I am getting ready to head back to Arizona for one more try on the OTC. Um, with the canvas cutter boys so that'll be the next video hope you guys enjoyed this one we'll see you on the next one